Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. So we need to be prepared for a bit of volatility, I think, in the next few days. I think this range will break this week and it might already break today or tomorrow. Um, reason is we've got some catalysts. So today we've got Fed Chair Powell who testifies about the semi-annual monetary policy report <clears throat> before um, a committee that will go into tomorrow. Okay, so that starts today at 10 a.m. Eastern time but it will go into tomorrow. And then tomorrow we've got, uh, and, and the remainder of the week, we've got a lot of job data that comes in um, from the US. And that last time also led to quite a bit of volatility. And at the moment, there's quite a bit of focus on US job data in general. Okay, but either way, we're still in the same pattern. We're still in the triangle and Bitcoin did move up once more. We talked about that in the last video. Highlighted, be aware, this could be you could call it dead cat bounce, you know, something that will probably come down again. It might actually lead to another low. So my yesterday's video, we were here and did highlight to you that we could very well extend out a little bit further with an E-wave. By the way, let's actually calculate the target for the C-wave just to see if we reached, uh, for the E-wave, just to see if we reached what we needed to reach. Um, did we actually talk about that target yesterday? I think we did. Did we? Or was it only on the Ethereum video? Because here you're watching for the 61.8 extension at 22,570. That's pretty much what was reached. Okay, so that's an ideal target for an E-wave. Gives confidence that this indeed might have been the last wave of the triangle, which might now break to the downside. We have a range of targets here, down here, from the end of that yellow vertical line to the end of that one. Um, we talk about 21.7 to basically 21.9k where this move could end, but we talked about that yesterday, depending on where I measure the thrust of the triangle. Um, but um, it might sit a little higher because to be honest, I actually need to put these where the E-wave ended. So it might actually go here between 21,860 to, 21, to 22,060 in the very first attempt. But either way, this fifth wave needs to go below the third wave. So ideally we're looking for anything below 21,990. Um, you can also look at it in terms of, you know, depending on how I how I count this move um, as a one two one two or just one complete one two. Um, either way, it wouldn't make a great difference. So if we calculate the target for the fourth wave, just by looking at Fibonacci extensions from this high, we're looking at the following targets. This, by the way, is good confluence. Can you see how the thirty eight point two extension? hits perfectly that yellow line. And that wasn't measured with FIB extensions. It, it was measured by taking the height of the triangle. Okay, um, it's quite uh, interesting how these sometimes overlap. So this at 21,860, I would expect some confluence there, some reaction. And we've got 21,430, which heads or which leads into our support area anyway, that we've been discussing in the last few days and 20,728. So these are the levels. But the main support area is still this one between 20k and 21,536. Because what I think could happen is that we make one initial low in the third wave. We could then get quite an extended fourth wave again. Depending on how I count the move to the downside, we might be able to talk about that in a little bit more detail in the next video. Um, depending on if we see a range breakout. This video is really only to look at the short term. But later today, I'll make more of a long term medium term video to talk about all these scenarios again. So if you're new on this channel, hang around, subscribe, and you will get notified or you should get notified about the next video. Um, and then we talk about a little bit of, about the different options here. But for me, unchanged, you know, could get one more low, a larger bounce to the upside and then come down eventually. Um, so it's, it's one more low or two more lows. I'm unsure about that at this stage. We need to see how do we react to the next low. And that's why I'm scaling in to Bitcoin already starting slowly and we'll add more as we go lower into the support area, but below 20k or below 19 point, yeah, below 19, let's say 19.7k, I want to be out. Um, or at least we'll consider to, to sell again or to stop out. Um, but at the moment, yeah, we have, we, we certainly have one corrective pattern complete. So maybe it's just waiting for the US to open the stock market. Maybe the triangle will break today. We've got a very, very complete um, looking triangle. It doesn't need another E-wave. It doesn't need anything. It could just break down. Now, of course, this doesn't mean it will break down. We always need to wait for a breakdown or breakout signal. 
that will occur if the move, so the first, uh, first indicator would be a break of the BD line, but that's not relevant enough. What is more relevant is a break of the D wave low, which is at 22,320, but even that is not a confirmation. It, would, it could, in the worst case, just lead to another extension of the triangle. So we just have to reset everything a little bit, okay? But um, if we, therefore, I always, always say we need to see the break of the B wave, which in this case is um, 22,197 or 22,200, actually. If we go below that level, then I think we have our confirmation that we're heading down. So be ready here at any point. At the moment, it's trying again to break the trend line. This gets more brittle as we uh, touch it more and more frequently. We've got four touch points here now, five. Yeah, so after five touch points, such a line gets actually very unreliable, which means it doesn't hold that often anymore because, you know, it gets too obvious. So um, also we're heading very, very, um, we're heading uh, further into the triangle, closer to the apex. And at some point you see that breakout. And again, we've got those, you could say more fundamental catalysts like um, the um, Jerome Powell um, testimony and um, the job data coming. So that will be interesting. Um, but yeah, the trend is still down in my opinion. Also the breakout should ideally occur to the downside. That will be my view as long as we stay below 22.8K. Note that if we go now above the E wave high, which was marked overnight at 22,560, we cannot see this anymore as a triangle where well, we can, but it could, in the first instance, it would probably lead to an extension of the triangle. that will have to move wave E, maybe even wave C. But if we break above the A wave high at 22,653, then it's probably something like a WXY. But then be above 22.8K, I have to assume that we are already, that we already bottomed, yeah, which is unlikely, but certainly a possibility we need to talk about. It's all about probabilities, but for now, as long as this stays as it is, and we don't break above 22.8K, I'm looking at these downside targets here first before recovering. Okay, that's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.